Every year, hurricanes hit the coast of the American continent with tremendous force. Gusts of wind up to 200 kilometers per hour and torrential rain pose a threat to 50 million people in the United States alone. On the other side of the Atlantic, in some years, the people wait in vain for rain to fall. In drought regions like Darfur and Sudan, this can result in life-threatening famine. Apart from other factors, the drought in North Africa and the tropical storms in America share a common cause. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. It carries vast amounts of warm water from the equator to the Arctic. This warmth influences the formation of subtropical rainfall and hurricanes. But the ocean current is not always the same. Its strength fluctuates. Professor Jochen Marotzka is tracking down the secrets of the ocean currents in the Atlantic. He is a climatologist at the Max Planck Institute of Meteorology in Hamburg. He wants to find out why the current varies and by how much, and whether it is possible to predict the fluctuations. The ocean circulation plays an important role in many factors affecting climate. This means that we have to monitor it constantly. You may have heard the saying that we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the depths of the ocean. And it's true. Of course, the main problem is the fact that we cannot see into the ocean depths. For a long time, scientists thought that the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation was a single broad ocean current, like a column of tankers constantly carrying warm water northwards. But not all the trucks actually reached the north. Some of them turned back in a southerly direction beforehand, but nobody knew that in those days. If we ask ourselves, how much warm water travels north altogether? Some trucks take the back road at some point, so to speak. And there are lots of back roads. There's one of them. And I can imagine another one which turns back down again further to the east. And until we started on our project, we basically didn't have any sort of traffic survey as to how many trucks have taken these little side roads southwards. What we needed was a full-scale traffic survey across the entire Atlantic to count all these trucks carrying warm and cold water. At first, that was easier said than done. How do you measure an ocean current over a distance of almost 7,000 kilometers? Because that is the distance between the coasts of Africa and America. So Jochen Marotzka and his assistants developed a plan. The oceanographers chose to make their measurements along the line of latitude 26.5 degrees north. Along this line, they made a sort of cross section through the ocean. This ought to enable them to draw conclusions about the circulation in the Atlantic as a whole. However, the existing current flow data from the research ships proved insufficient, so the scientists planned to install some additional measuring probes. In 2004, Jochen Marotzka set out on a research expedition straight across the Atlantic. Together with his English colleagues, he anchored 19 measurement probes on the seabed. They record the temperature, salinity, speed, and current direction down to a depth of 5,000 meters, every 15 minutes, 24 hours a day. Once a year, all the probes are hauled up on board ship in order to read off the data. The project is called RAPID, and it is the prototype for a new survey system that Jochen Marotzka has set up. It is the only way of producing a continuous record of the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation over the next 10 years in order to be able to spot the fluctuations. The probes in the Atlantic allow the scientists to carry out a kind of traffic survey of the heat transporters. By measuring right down to great depths, the scientists can recognize how many tankers turn back and where, and which route they follow on their journey back down south. Even the experts were surprised at their results. And that was what we originally thought. We said, something as big as that can really only react slowly and sluggishly. It cannot undergo rapid changes. And our measurements showed clearly that the fluctuations were incredibly large. They went up and down at a speed that no one would ever have expected. Over the course of a year, up to 30 million cubic meters of water may flow northwards. And at other times, it may be less than 10 million. 
The scientists suspect that seasonal winds are responsible and that they only have an effect after a delay of several months. Is it possible not only to measure these fluctuations but also to predict them in the future? To know how drought or hurricanes are likely to develop? The scientists at the Max Planck Institute hope to achieve precisely this. Using a climate model developed by the Max Planck Institute, they are able to simulate the processes taking place in the oceans and the atmosphere. First of all, the scientists test whether the model can reproduce the data from their ocean measurements correctly. That is the hind cast, the quality check for any climate model. Only when the hind cast works can the scientists attempt a forecast, the prediction of the climate for the coming years. Complex climate models can only be calculated using powerful computers, like this one at the German Climate Computing Center next door to the Max Planck Institute in Hamburg. The computers need several months, but then they provide an answer. And as we and when we had established that we really can produce good forecasts of these fluctuations, it was quite a strange feeling. Because we knew that we would be able to predict the circulation over a period of several years, which nobody had ever achieved before. But how will the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation behave in future? Will it become weaker, or perhaps even grind to a halt altogether at the end of the century, as some scientists fear? There is concern about the regions in the far north into which the cooled water flows down into the depths. The Atlantic meridional overturning circulation only exists because these regions are available for it to sink downwards. They work like a lift. The water masses, represented by the tankers in our picture, sink down to depths of up to 3,000 meters. From there, they flow back southwards again. But the lift can only operate if the water is very cold and the concentration of salt is high. If it gets warmer, parts of Greenland's ice cap begin to melt into the northern Atlantic. The resulting meltwater dilutes the salt water, the salinity is reduced, and the water becomes less dense. Then nothing sinks to the bottom, and the lift stops working. Then the transport of the warm water towards the north would have been interrupted, as well as the heat transfer to the atmosphere. And we really would have something which we could call a breakdown of this overall circulation pattern. Then we would see a drop in temperature of somewhere between 3 and 5 degrees centigrade in Western Europe and Northern Europe. And that would be dramatic. So far, the computer model of Jochen Marotzka and his colleagues can already predict accurately the current fluctuations for the next four years. We were successful in predicting a very strong reduction in the current at the beginning of 2010, which then actually took place. But we also predicted that the reduction would be short-lived. It would come to an end in a few months. And that is also what the data have confirmed. And that means that we are confident about our forecast, that the fluctuations will continue until 2014, but nothing dramatic will happen. So far, there are no precise forecasts for the years after that. But the scientists at the Max Planck Institute are working hard to be able to recognize in good time any disruptions to the circulation, for example, due to climate change brought about by man. <laughs>